I'd like to open up a whole new world of glass fusing to you by showing you an object of painting on glass. It's kind of revolutionary. Uh, we know how to fuse glass, we know how to stack glass on top of each other to make designs, but how about just painting anything you'd like? We have a new product line called Hues to Fuse, and it's all non-toxic, it's all food safe, so if you decided you wanted to paint a cereal bowl, great. Anything you want to paint is food safe. It's all non-toxic. So today I'm going to show you just the basics. How to mix the paint and how to apply it. So the all-in kit gives you 18 colors. 16 of them are powder form that you can mix when you're ready to use them. We also have two that are pre-mixed in a liquid form. And you'll see why in a minute. So we've got ordinary sheet glass. And the beauty of this paint is it can go on fusible glass as well as something that would be non-fusible. For example, an empty wine bottle. You could paint a design on it and then fire that in your kiln. So here we go. Let's look at this paint. I've chosen four colors here. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of each one out onto my little paint palette. Now the nice thing about Hughes to Fuse is in a form that's dry. So you don't have to worry about it drying up on you. It'll last forever. So let's just sprinkle out a little bit of one color into the little well. This kind of keeps our colors separated. So a little bit of Merlot, a little bit of saffron. I feel like I'm on a cooking show here. A little saffron in. Also see a little goes a long way. A little bit of turf. and a little bit of peacock. These colors are all intermixable as well, so if we didn't have just the exact right shade of blue or green, feel free to mix them together to create an endless amount of color tones. So now in the kit you're going to get a media, glass media. So I'm going to put just a drop or two into each color. Now the other nice thing about using your own media, adding it to the dry powder, you're in control of the consistency. If you're doing a design that you want more sheer, kind of watercolor, add more media. If you want it to be more solid or more opaque, put a little less media. So I'm going to go ahead and just use my brush to softly blend the liquid and the powder together. What I'm looking for is a nice brushable consistency. See how nice and creamy that is? It mixes up so easily. I'm going to give my brush a swish in some water. Another good thing, no harsh medias. All water cleanup. Mix this together to get our yellow prepared. There he goes. Notice there's no grinding. Uh, the color just blends with water so easily. You also can mix what you need. So if you're doing a little project, mix a little paint. If you're doing a great big project, mix more paint. Very flexible. You can adapt this to your project need. There we go. And now our last color. Isn't that beautiful? Very regal. That's why we call it peacock, I guess. All right. So all our colors are mixed and ready to paint with. Let's go back and talk a little bit about our pre-mixed colors. We call this texture black and texture white. I'm not going to use any of the white on this project, but I am going to show you how to use this black. So listen, it's already pre-mixed for us. Now in the kit you're going to get this little handy applicator bottle. So when you get it, it looks like this with a little lid on it. I'm going to remove that lid, gently wiggle this tip, it pops right off, and I'm going to pour this black right into my applicator bottle. Maybe halfway. Replace our little pointed lid, snap it on, and cover this so I don't spill it. And I've got a little stainless steel tip for doing small line detail. So I'm going to push it and give it a slight twist. So this is now ready to roll also. We're going to use that to detail our design. All right, so let's decide what we're going to paint. Um, let's do something really simple that any, any of you can do. You can make a little flower in your 
thinking already, oh, I'm no artist, I can't do this. Watch and see how easy I can make this for you. I'm going to start with yellow, and you're just going to set the brush down, plop, plop. We just made a flower center. Anybody can do that, just dab, dab. Just kind of round it. Now let's add some flower petals. Pick up some of this Merlot on the brush, and we're going to paint this from the sky towards the flower center. So I'm just going to set my brush down and drag it towards it. Set my brush down and drag it towards it. Boom, boom. Fast, fast. Towards the center. Towards the center. We've got room for one more petal. I'm just dragging that brush. No need for any fancy brush stroke lessons or anything like that. Now we need some leaves. We're going to do that the very same way. Pick up some of the green. Drag, 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 drag. It doesn't really matter what size brush you use or the shape of the brush. All brushes will work for this, as long as there's soft hair. Okay, we're going to call that done. Now this paint dries pretty quickly. So we're going to start adding some detail. Now, I'm using this little writer bottle because it's much easier to control and get a thin line rather than trying to use a brush. So this is going to be kind of a scribbly technique, so don't worry about being perfect or accurate here. Um, so it's going to be very freestyle. Just kind of wiggle it around, make a circle in the middle, just wiggle it out. See how I'm just kind of wiggling this? Very free. We all know how to scribble. So there's our flower. Let's do a center down the leaf and then give it an outline. Center down the leaf, and then kind of outline it. Center, outline, center, outline. So there's your points that you thought we needed to make with the brush. Yeah. Now just to add some interest, to make it look kind of funky, let's add some spirals. Just fill up that field a little bit. Just pull it out and spiral it. Fun, huh? Now, for the background, I'm going to pick up just a little bit of this peacock color on my brush. And I'm not going to paint this the way you might think. I'm just going to dab. And I'm going to come close to my black, but not touch it. So just dab, 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 dab. Easy, easy. Anybody can do it. Now I'm creating a little bit of texture. And I'm also creating lights and darks. So when this fires, it will look like a watercolor painting, where you'll see some dark areas and some light areas. It'll be very pleasing to the eye, and it will look hand-painted, and you'll be able to brag and say, see what I painted. You can also flip the brush back and forth. Let's go up on the tip of the brush and get in between these little spirals a little bit, just to add a little hint of color. So it's just dab, 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 dab. That looks a little heavy there, so I'm just simply going to brush over it a little bit more to spread it out. So by painting on glass, you're able to control um, how far you spread your paint. It's not soaking into the surface, it's just hanging out on the top. So while it's still a little bit damp, you're able to kind of smoosh it around and move it and control it and get it just the way you like it. Almost there. So that's our background. Now something else you can do that's fun with this paint, before that background dries completely, I can take, say, the back end of a pen or the back end of a brush, and I can scrape through my paint. Can you see that? I'm removing the paint from the surface, and I'm adding some additional spirals then I'm removing the paint and you'll see them show up as white because that's the background of the glass color. So there's a fancy word for this called scraffito. Isn't that easy? So you can sign your name that way, add a message, personalize it, and it's just that easy. Let's add a little bit of highlights to our uh, flower petals. Just give it a little stem, a little vein. Easy, huh? So this piece would be ready to go into the kiln, 
and we're going to fire it to a, either a full fuse temperature or a slumping temperature or a contour temperature. It's very versatile. So if you had a project that you were ready to slump that you've already fused and you decide you want to personalize it or add some hand painting to it, you could add it at that point and then slump it. So it's very flexible, easy to use. 